Hello and welcome back to Severe MMA. My name is Ian O'Neill and today I am joined by the Lion of Tipperary, Will Flory, who's chomping at the bit. He takes on Oja Kajibad at EMF2 in Sofia in Bulgaria on September the 11th. Will, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, how are you doing, man? You must be looking forward to getting back in there. It's been almost a year to the day, I think, will you be stepping in there since you were last in there? And um, how are you feeling? You're looking forward to, to getting going. Yeah, I've been delighted to finally have something lined up now. It's been a long year. Uh, it's been pretty frustrating at times trying to get fights and get everything got falling through. But thankfully, this is happening. And I'm hoping that there'll be a good run of fights after this. So there might even be a possibility of another in October. Um, and then hopefully one more before Christmas, if possible. But yeah, look... This is the fight in front of me now, so get over to Bulgaria mm-hmm. next Saturday. Nice, nice. So, like, take me back to the past year, Will. Um, you know, the last time we saw you was against Ken Kapoinen at the, the Euro Series, uh, the last event there. Um, in my opinion, it was one of your best performances of your career. Um, I thought you performed very well, very dominating performance. Like, Kent is a, is a good striker. You dominated and a good grappler, too. And you really made easy work of it with him on the ground. So, um, tell me about what happened. I mean, were you disappointed that you couldn't build off that win in Bellator? Uh, like, you're no longer with Bellator anymore. Can you just tell me what happened there or how you're feeling about that whole situation? Um, like to be honest, when I first found out, like, so originally it was, I was, that was the end of a six fight contract I had with them. And I was, it wasn't really like Bellator Europe. I got signed to was the States Bellator. So my contract was a little bit different anyway. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd probably get put back on some European contract. Um, cause I was on pretty good money. Mm-hmm. So I, I felt like, ah, they're going to try and knock me down a level here anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like, I thought that. If I got the Fabian Edwards fight or one of those, I like I really thought that, that fight was gonna happen at that stage. Um and I thought, okay, you could get pretty well paid for that, and that'd be a great one. Like and smash him mm-hmm. and fucking, you know, things are gonna yeah. happen. Like. Yeah. Uh, but then it kind of like they were talking about that, like it was gonna happen for a while. And then earlier in the year, everything just started drying up and there was kind of very little coming back. And then I got told I wasn't being re-signed, but that if there was, because uh, yeah, they kind of like I was out of contract. So when mm-hmm. I found out that or they were kind of, oh, we'll send you a contract, we'll send you a contract, and then it never came. Never came. Um, and then they said, oh, we're not re-signing you, uh, but we're like very open to working with you in the future. You know, you've got a record with us and all this. Um, and then it kind of came back that. No, they're not really that interested at all. I think after they got taken over by um, the zone, yeah, or no time or any of them. So look, when I originally found that out, I was kind of like a little bit. Well, you could have told me this fucking a few months ago, and I could have gone and pursued something else a bit earlier. Yeah. Like, um. So I was frustrated in that sense, but I was kind of excited because I thought, look, there's going to be a ton of opportunities. I can fight wherever I want now. Um, but that has really fucking material. <laughs> no, 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 no. The way things are going now, it's very, it's very difficult for for guys to uh, fight. Said, like, yeah, we're, you're, like it's pretty much non-existent in Ireland right now. It, things are getting back on, but yeah, mainly like guys are having to do what you're having to do now: go out into into yeah. Europe and find no, those fights. No issue doing it, but it was even even getting those sort of opportunities, man. I was very open to everything. You know, yeah, it's great to find anybody at this stage. Yeah, um, yeah. It was just nobody was doing nothing. Like there was no promoters willing to put on shows. Or I suppose look, it's a very difficult situation for them to be in as well because they don't know how restrictions are going to go or anything yeah. like that. So for you, is the door completely closed on a Bellator return? I mean, the the card is coming up uh, in November. Uh, has there been any contact from Bellator or any contact from your team over to Bellator wanting to get on that card or them reaching out to you? No, nothing serious. Not, nothing at all. See, like, it looks like they're going for the lads that they can pay a lot less to mm-hmm. uh, at the moment. So they're, like, it's just a cost-saving exercise in their part, I'd imagine. And yeah. I'm not like the anything from them anytime soon. Like, my whole goal now, get into the UFC, like. That, uh, that's what I was going to ask you next, is is that is that where you're, where you're focusing your attention on now, like you're looking forward in? Like I was saying, why else would I still be involved in this man I'm getting there and that's you know 
So are you looking at are you looking at Kent, who you fought last in Cage Warriors right now, who picked up a good win, um, who's probably on like you know maybe one more win could be he could be ch- chanting for a title there. Uh, you do you have one eye on maybe Cage Warriors look going over there challenging a few yeah. guys there, trying to grab the belt. It's it seems to be a surefire path to get to the UFC. Yeah, um, that's the thing. I kind of feel like I'd love to have that option, but it's not really on the cards. Mm-hmm. Like, politically and stuff yeah so like it's first um, level well that's pretty annoying to be honest but again there are other opportunities out there and i'm mm-hmm. pursuing that. so right now i'm on to a management crowd um they're telling me they can get me a fight in abu dhabi warriors at the end of october yeah and then, then possibly the the uh dana white looking for a fight might be being filmed at that so mm-hmm. that'd be opportunity yeah like they're, they're all yeah, that's for sure i mean there are a couple of different options i, I you know a, a good run and brave fc as well you could see you go over there too i mean but yeah, so I, got, I actually got offered a contract by brave um i got offered a five fight deal with them and it wasn't bad money but it was no buyout clause and it was over yeah. a three period so three years and i was like well i'm 32 now they're not gonna let you get bought out you're gonna be 35 by the time you're finished this uh, it just seemed like it was kind of given up on the UFC to me. So yeah. Not, so not if I put it to you this way, if you if the phone rang tomorrow morning and it was Graham Boylan on the phone and he offered you offered you a deal with with Cage Warriors, would you take it? Um, it depends what that deal was and what the offer yeah. was. Like I don't think they paid the sort of money that I'd be interested in. But at the same time, I'm very open. By as in, you know it. Again, it depends if it's a one fight contract or how many fights you want me for. What you know, who do you yeah, lo- loads of details, lots of fighter yeah, details. Like, like, yeah, look, I feel like I do very, very well over there. Um, yeah, <laughs> or anything, like, look, all I need, man, is opportunity, and it's not that I'm like trying particularly to get in one promotion or the other. Mm-hmm. I just want to ask the best guys out there and show how good I am. Yeah, and I feel like I owe that to myself at this stage because I've been doing it inside gyms for years, and you know, like shown that I'm a fucking top level prospect but I haven't really put it out there as much yet and like I've screwed myself when the opportunities come up a few times but like I'm at a stage now where I feel a lot more like proficient in all aspects of fighting like Mm -hmm. mentally physically technically I'm kind of just like right I'm calm in all the storms in any situation I'm kind of above you know where I was a year ago definitely and like Mm -hmm. I look back Kent fight and you're there saying oh it's great performance I look at the amount of things there like I watched it recently and I was just like god you've improved so much since then and I, everyone will always feel like that but of like, course of course and what what would you what would be the main things that you, you think you've improved on looking back at that fight and then looking ahead into the next fight so just my positional control grappling wise like okay some of the entries were pretty good like I was happy with my timing and the entries in that fight but there was a few times I went for grips a little bit overzealously. And like, it would have worked against a less strong guy. He was in very good shape at that stage. Uh, like, I couldn't believe how kind of explosive and springy he was. Mm-hmm. But it was still poor technique. You know, some of the grips in those situations were wrong. Mm-hmm. Some of the like, even just where my knees were, where I could have been controlling with my hips and my lower body. And I wasn't doing it. I was just leaving those legs loose. Little things like that. And like... Yeah. There are habits now that over the last year, so like I've been in with Narius, who's a black belt inside an SPG, and you know, him and Muhammad Avtaranov, and the two of them are very, very high level grapplers. And basically, I spent six months just every morning being in there with the two of them, getting battered for most of it, like as in getting absolutely ragdolled. Yeah. 2018, like, so it was kind of a humbling experience for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, God, I'm like, like, my grappling improved so much during that period of time. And even like I've gone back down to doing, you know, some of the more like MMA style sessions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Like I, I just feel like my level is way above anybody else. Yeah. Around. Cause I'm able to adapt it to the MMA style as well. Like so for, for sure. Yeah. And like, I, I noticed there that you had been doing some work and doing some training with Johnny Walker, who's like top 10 yeah. UFC level guy as well. Like how, what was it like working with him, getting some training in with him was a good oh, experience. Yeah. Are you still, are you still working with him? Is he still with yeah, you guys yeah. at SPG? Yeah. 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 Um, he's there all the time. Like, he's, yeah. Him non stop, he's a good he's probably getting prepared for the Tiago Santos fight right now. Is that yeah. will you be helping him out getting him prepared for that now, even after your fight and stuff like that? 
Yeah, looks like I will be. Um, we've been doing a good bit of sparring now over the last month, two months, um, six weeks or whatever. Mm. So like we've had fairly regular kind of, you know, and we train five fives together quite a lot, which would be like a less intense version mm-hmm. where you're a little bit lighter on the strikes and a bit more grappling. That like, look, yeah, I like it's really great to have that measuring tool. Um, yeah, and it gives me a lot of confidence to be like, okay, you know, you know where you're at, like you know what mm-hmm. level you're at. Like, so yeah. Um, and like just to have somebody like Johnny, he's a good character as well. And like, yeah, is, is he fun? He seems like a fun guy, and it would be a good guy to have around the gym. I'm sure that yeah, he brings, he brings a good bit of crack, I guess. It creates a bit of a buzz. And blood, like, it is that thing. It's like, well, here's a guy who's fighting Tiago Santos, top 10 mm. UFC. It's a buzz, and like, yeah. it's a measuring stick for you, and it can create that. Like, it just makes me a lot more ambitious, I suppose, the whole thing is because it's like, well, look, this is the level. You're enough. You're at that fucking level. Yeah, right? if you're able to hang there for sure, it's definitely yeah, going to give yeah. you that confidence. Right. Like, I yeah. won't. We won't spend too much on Johnny, but like looking at him, seeing him prepare. How is he looking ahead of the, the fight with Santos? And uh, just the big expectations going into that fight. He's obviously going to be going in there to make a statement. It's a it's a huge fight for him. Hey, look, Johnny's a fucking freak athlete. So like, he could go in there and do something absolutely incredible. And you yeah, like, yeah, that's just like you know, he yeah. just does. Stuff like that. Like, <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting, you know. It'll be very yeah. interesting. I do like I definitely think there's things he's been working on that he's improved on a ton. There's probably a few more bits he needs to improve on. There are dangers like Tiago Santos, a fucking massively dangerous opponent. Mm-hmm. But ah uh, look, he's, if he's smart about it, he should get the job done. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to seeing him compete. Uh, before we talk about your fight up ahead, I uh, just wanted to, uh, you were over corner in Franz Malambo earlier on this year when he picked up his right. title. I was just wondering what that experience was like for you being in the corner. Uh, do you enjoy doing some corner work and do you plan yeah. to do a lot more of that down the line? Um, I love cornering, yeah. And especially when it's called like France. France is the easiest person in the world to corner. Literally. <laughs> yeah. We were up wind, the, wind him up and let him go. <laughs> but not even that, like he's just so chill the whole day. Yeah. It's like, you know, in the room, looking at the fucking stream on the phone. And I was like, Franz, you're up in three fights. And it's like, all right, nice one, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'd be fucking fully warmed up, <laughs> everything at this stage. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'll just hop in the shower. Spends like 20 <laughs> minutes showering. <laughs> just easy, oh, easy, yeah, man, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's uh, different, like, he, and he's just so slick then when he gets going. Um, yeah. With that fight, like, 10, 15 minutes beforehand, I was like, he needs to have done a bit more of a warm-up. He needs to be a bit more ahead in the game. And then with about five minutes left, he just switched. And I was like, oh, yeah, there he is. There yeah, he is, yeah. It's crazy. And it was a beautiful performance. Yeah, it absolutely was. And uh, it was great work by him and you you guys in the corner, too. It was great. just uh, yeah, a real snatch and grab job over there. And I look forward to it. Is the plan, will you be cornering Fran Solid going ahead for maybe future fights there? Or what's going on? It's just the way it worked out that time? Or? I think there's been a bit of an issue with, uh, so he's supposed to fight Taylor Lapidus for the title. Or, yeah, he's got the title now. And, uh I think Taylor Lapidus is supposed to fight him, but I think there's been a bit of an issue agreeing that fight, so I don't know what's next for him, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, looking towards yourself now a bit more, uh, heading into your fight um, with Hoja, uh, it was a, this was a change of opponents and you were originally supposed to be fighting? Yeah, so about two months ago, maybe even a bit more, uh, they contacted me, asked me when I fight a Polish K1 guy, who's, I think he's some sort of champion in K1. Mm-hmm. Um, and I looked at him and I was like yeah great and it was decent enough money too so I was happy out mm-hmm. and then, um, he ended up pulling out I thought he would because I was a little bit more experienced than anyone else he yeah. so he pulled out and then they told me they'd keep me on the card and that they'd find somebody else but it was a long time finding somebody and then about a month ago now maybe even a bit less they sent me this guy and I said yeah great anybody like just doesn't really know. matter at this stage to you I don't think but um, in the meantime then a funny situation has kind of arisen where there I might be fighting Michael Materla um, so they're not sure if his opponent can make it and right he can't or well he's not vaccinated and I think they're worried about him getting into Bulgaria because he's unvaccinated mm-hmm. uh, if he can't get in then I'll end up fighting him 
and I get paid a lot more for that. So I'd like that fight if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. That's making the best of a bad situation, I guess. So like, there's no guarantees you're fighting Hoshat then. That's what you're t- telling me here. I look, I'm preparing as if I'm They're preparing him. for him? Yeah. But if it mm-hmm. ends up um, Michael Matarla, great. Yeah, and great. so does that, like uncertainty around the fight does it have any effect on you or is it just do you prepare yourself to be able just to be able to deal with anything when you get in there well i think it's how you approach it mentally beforehand so mm-hmm. are you comfortable with that situation yeah why like why wouldn't you be and you know these are questions you have to be honest with yourself about i'm like i'm experienced enough that i feel like okay whoever the fuck it is you should be smashing them. so mm-hmm. You know, you have to be like honest with yourself and be like, "Am I doing the work? Am I at that level? Am I doing like, okay, yeah, well then, this is a huge opportunity. So why wouldn't yeah. you want to the opportunity? Do you do you like the game plan going? Do you like the game plan going into fights, or do you just kind of like yeah, to see I've where? Heard, but like, yeah. I often think you know I've had huge game plan. Now for Kelvin, and the game plan worked actually very well, and it happened exactly like I kind of thought it would. I just thought mm-hmm. he'd break, or I thought it's you know grappling wouldn't hold up as well as it did for as long as it did yeah. Um, but yeah I would generally have a good like set out planned but then so many times that hasn't been what's happened at all so yeah. you kind of be willing to ride with it even in most of my spires like I have things that I want to try and execute and sometimes they're not happening at all but you can still do amazingly well like it's just mm-hmm. see the opportunities wherever they are for sure yeah big time big time uh, is Coming into this next fight, whoever it's against, I mean, is it? Are you just going to go in there fight your fight? Uh, you know, you're you're a really dominant grappler. You're super strong. There's not many people that can match your strength. I don't think. Uh, is the game plan always going to be for you to take the fight down to the ground and just pound your opponent out? Try to break him. Yeah. Are you looking to try and showcase maybe some new striking that you've been working on? Definitely. Um, so. Look, I I probably haven't really shown it much in my fights. I was like, I had two knockouts in a row at one stage back in mm-hmm. 2017. Um, so two of my first three fight or two of my first three fights for TKOs. Um, but up until and even like Sean Taylor, I heard him a few times in the feet. And your man Moore, uh, I heard him with a good uppercut and a straight left. Um, but yeah, look, I've much more dangerous hands than I've let be shown up until now and I really want to get them out there and obviously look everybody fucking loves knockouts so yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you know it's a nice viral video then if you get something special like so I want to bring out a few little things that I've been working like I feel like I'm very good at not getting fucked up anymore you know mm-hmm. uh, I used to get kind of involved in scraps where I'd like you hit me okay I'm gonna hit you harder <laughs> yeah yeah and that attitude really didn't serve me very well, like because no, it's kind of like an old school MMA mentality. Uh, like yeah. you can, you know, a lot of the old school fighters would have done that, where a lot of fighters are um, trans transgressing into like yeah, more like like contact movement and stuff like that. So obviously you have to have those heavy spars. Like what, what way do you balance sparring sessions? Uh, like I know you don't obviously don't go maybe full one hundred percent. Or do you go 100% yeah, like, ever? It was, you know, like I in London shoot, we used to spar like it was a fight. And yeah, you know, you rock the guy, you'd finish, you know, you'd go after him. That's it, yeah, yeah. But we don't do that in SPG. It's like we have fight simulations and they'd be mm-hmm. a higher intensity. So they'd be more like, you know, you're going for it a bit. Like, so if you can tag somebody, you will tag them. Like, mm-hmm. and you got to be aware, you've got to have good head movement down and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And I think it's important to simulate that a little bit. Yeah, Especially definitely. Experienced, you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure fun. like do, do you think that like your approach if you were to compare the two approaches like saying preparing for a fight and going at it hard and sparring rather than doing what you're doing now do you think that you've benefited as a fighter overall because of that um maybe because you're taking less damage during your training and during your sparring sessions 100 so like yeah look there's a time and a place for that intensity and it's good, and I think you need a certain amount of that, especially you need to have had it in your locker from the past or whatever. But day in, day out, if you're training like that, you're battered, and your mm-hmm. body's not going well. Like, even, like, your nervous system, everything's going to get a little bit fucked up from training like that eventually. So mm-hmm. you learn it from doing it in a way as well, as in, like, you know, you make mistakes, and then you kind of correct them, and you come back. And like, I've been involved in this for a long time, so you kind of you either 
pay attention and you cop on to things that aren't working for you or you just keep doing the same shit and fucking it up and I don't want to be that guy so yeah. I'd like yeah. learn to just kind of no no less intensity with more volume even like the way I was training with Narius and Muhammad there the last few months we'll come in and we'll drill something for an hour and a half mm-hmm. and it's just the same thing and it is tedious like you do get a bit just like oh god I've done this fucking <laughs> already like yeah ultimately like the next time you go to do that movement it's basically subconscious yeah and yeah it's a thing and it's just a skill you've developed and it's something you have now in your arsenal that you didn't have a couple of weeks ago so and to be able to rely on that when you're tired in a fight as yeah. well as that repetitive yeah, movement like, helps out for you so that. Low intensity it puts it into a different place it's like a place where it's just what you know how to do and there isn't mm. another whereas if you kind of if you drill something 10 times, then you go, oh, okay, let's go live and let's do this. As soon as the pressure really comes on, you revert back to what you originally did. Yeah. The brain is going to go, oh, no, 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 we'll go back to the thing we know. That's safe. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you yeah. do something 100 times, it's literally like sure, your brain actually doesn't even remember the old way. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, I get like, you. I get you for sure. Um, it's, well, like, I mean, coming into this next fight, I don't know, like, can you see it going? the same way what would you be your prediction i guess but like between michael materna and 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 hoja kajavan they're you know different levels of experience different kind of fighters uh you're just going to go out there and fight your fight or what do you hope to get out of this next fight on september 11th yeah look um hopefully you know it ends up being the guy that i'm scheduled to fight and everything works out for everybody else but uh i think i can tk home and i think i can tk home with a bit of class so look, that's on me now. I have to make that happen. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm like I'm giving you a highlight clip to share. Hopefully, like lovely yeah. job. I look forward to seeing that too. And um, like you said, you want you want to go once or twice again uh, before the end of the year. Are you looking just towards more fights at EMF? There, are you happy there right now? Um, have you uh, signed no. a multi fight contract or is it no, one fight deal? No, I'm all about one fight deals. You yeah, know, don't want to get tied into anything too much. But um, yeah. Like, I haven't really spoken to them about what's going to happen after this. He's talked, he wanted a contract originally, but no. Um, it looks maybe like Abu Dhabi Warriors might be on the cards. If not that, I'll be fighting somewhere, you know, in the next couple of months again. Anyway, I've a couple of, I've just been hassling guys and uh, I have a manager now who's kind of trying to hassle people as well. So, perfect. Uh, look, as long as you're willing, like, and I'm very kind of like, you know, health wise, injury wise, everything like weight wise, everything's very good at the moment. And I'm kind of in this like peak position to just go right, line up the opportunities and watch me smash them. Like, nice, yeah, nice, that's great. Before I let you go, I have to talk to you about uh, your love for this bud, the love for the video. You're you're a great man for just a playful for a week. So uh, I was I was going to ask you what what. Yeah. <laughs> What, what would be like, the spud? What would be the spud intake at the start of camp, and what's the spud intake right now? Well, right. So I went through a big strength building phase there for about. I, I knew that I probably wasn't going to get out during the summer, um, and I had twelve weeks where I was like, right, you may as well just put on a bit of weight, and bulk up mm. a bit. So at that stage, I was eating nearly five thousand calories a day for a while. And when you actually eat that much food, you can't eat the volume of spuds you need. To eat. <laughs> I had to actually start eating a lot of rice and things like that because just the sheer size of the plate, <laughs> you're trying to get that much spun on. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, and I can imagine you'd want to bring probably bring a wheelbarrow of spuds in there. Yeah, you'd want to yeah. No, like, I was buying the fucking ten kilo bags. They were going with like, I was just like, ah, oh, oh, hilarious. If if right, if someone came up to you and and they were to say, you name your your top three potato dishes, what would it be? Um, I like wedges. I really like just fucking good wedges, well cooked, bit of salt. Um, like Colcannon's lovely as well. Um, and then I do like potato gratin too. But like, to be honest, most of what I end up cooking is shit. Like they're all fucking effort to prepare. You know I mean? <laughs> no, just buy the few spuds and yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throw a bit of butter and a bit of salt on them, they'll be grand. Lump it in there, it'll be done in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. As quickly as I can. Um, and like, yeah, it's fucking probably like 70% of the spots are either baby potatoes because they cook quicker. Like, 
I'm lovely. Sorry. And if you, you get yourself an air fryer and cook them in the air fryer at that. Yeah. On real. A bunch of people, yeah. Unreal, yeah. unreal. I got an air fryer this year and it's changed my life. Uh, everything is going into it. Fry, uh, love, lovely fried spuds in the morning. That's my favorite for sure. Well, I won't keep you any longer, Will. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining me today. Um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you fight. Uh, for anyone who is wondering, uh, when he's fighting September 11th at EMF2 against Hojak Kajivan, hopefully. Um, and uh, that's available on pay-per-view. You can get the link uh, on Will's Instagram. Yeah, you, have, you have the link up there in your Instagram. And on my Facebook as well. And on your Facebook as well. Uh, EMF2 is available on September the 11th. Uh, you'll be can buy it on pay-per-view. Will, do you have any shout-outs, any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, the floor is yours, Matt. Yeah, uh, Ross Nutrition has been very good to me the last while. Um, just providing everything all the time. And uh, other than that, I've had a few other crowds who are thinking of coming on board, but nobody's asked you on it, so fuck them. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious yeah well you can catch Will at, at EMF too I mean there's some more Irish talent on that card as well uh, Norman Park is also fighting on the same card I believe and uh, David Winsnos is always fight, uh, is fighting on that according to Tapology as well so uh, along with supporting Will you can support those guys as well by the pay-per-view I'm looking forward to seeing Will perform um, he'll be hungry for, for success he's rooting for the knockout and uh, looking forward to seeing how he perform Will thanks for joining us um, follow Severe MMA, uh, hit the like and subscribe button, uh, helps us out a lot. Uh, I O'Neill MMA on Twitter. Uh, what's your Twitter handle, social media handles? How can people find you? Will fucking Flurry on Twitter, uh, or Will F C K I N Flurry, um, and then Will Flurry MMA on Instagram and Will Flurry on Facebook. Then perfect, go follow that man. Um, Hopefully we get to share a plate of spuds sometime down the line, Will. <laughs> and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. And thanks everybody for listening. I'll catch you the next time.